It's exciting to be here, and Neville mentioned about all these smart people in the room, and I'm going, so what am I doing here? And, uh, you know, in my world, I work with data a lot, and uh, just for fun, I kind of counted up all the presenters and panelists, and do you know that 31 out of the 48 presenters have multiple letters and names behind their name? And uh, I often like to tell this story, and I think Dr. Randall Spare was here the other day, and he's one of my very best friends in the world. And uh, we a lot of times will present together, and some of you, Megan, I apologize, you've had to hear this before, but he gets really nervous when I start talking. It's like going, because people say, you know, I'm, I've learned how to ultrasound and do some things with Dr. Bill Beal and, and other people at Kansas State, but we they go, uh, are you a veterinarian? I go, no but I slept with one last night and then then they all look at Randall and everything but my wife is a veterinarian and I've been texting both Randall and Eva for for tech support because I was like going I think I'm in over my head here there I'm just like the I told my friend Dr. Twig Marson over here I said I think I'm that duck at the Mojave Desert but I am excited to be here and I I'm the kid that went to K-State was gonna learn how to take care of cattle because I just want to be around animals and I learned this recently, or maybe over the last 35 years. Every animal is connected to a human. And I think what we have to work on, when we look at this and we collaborate, and, and you look on your, your, uh, your folders that came here, it's got the beef checkoff on the front of it. That's outstanding, that's awesome. But a lot of the people from my producer group, Greg, they're even debating whether that should be in place. We've got to get together, we've got to talk, and we've got to collaborate. So I'm going to visit with you briefly about a few things uh, that we try to do, but it's about people, it's about having a safe product, it's about getting together, and you know, I, I appreciate the Tyson folks so much on how they talked about you know, transparency and collaboration and, and just working together for a self safe product. And so I am from a ranch. Uh, we've grown that ranch through the years. Uh, we sell a lot of cattle. We have a lot of sales. But beef is our business, but people is our passion. So we work every day to build relationships and to make sure that we're providing a safe product. And can we get better? Can we learn from smart people like you? Absolutely. That's what we're here for, is to learn. So when we look at this and we go about it and we, we try to work and, and work in our area, and we'll talk a little bit about some things that have happened through the years, but every day we're trying to do what we can do to have a safer beef product. And to do that, uh, we gotta look at the history a little bit. My family, my granddad was born in a dugout, roughly three miles from where I live today. And for those of you not from Kansas, that was part of the 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 homestead act that Abraham Lincoln enacted and if you moved out to that godforsaken country and you lived there for seven years you could have that 160 acres okay and so if you look at that picture on the left on 1898 that's the exact same location that was taking with my family in the year 2000 of course some of you certainly twig knew him but Henry Gardner was always Greg knew him you know, he always was curious, and I think that's what we have to be in this business, is curious about how we can get better. And you know, he figured out that that was the exact same location on the ranch as where that cowboy was sitting there, my mom and my sister-in-law are sitting there. But that was 1,500 steers in 1898 that were there. But we're very proud of what we're able to do with, with some knowledge and some information for better grazing management that's better for the cattle, better for the land, and better for the people. So when we look at this and we look about how we're going to go about it, there's my granddad that was born in that hole in the ground in, in 1888 actually. Uh, and we look at where my dad grew up for the first seven years until they lost that place in the depression and moved back in with the grandparents. Uh, but it's a, it's a passion for cattle, a passion for people. And how can we make this better? And so when we talk about antibiotics and resistance and, and all these things, I mean, oftentimes, uh, I, I don't remember which panelist said it, but it was said very well. We in American agriculture, we don't need to apologize. We need to actually say we do a pretty good job. Henry had a saying that said, uh, we can't uh, fix the windmill because we're too busy hauling water. Well, as agriculturalists, oftentimes, we're not... Uh, 
comfortable about saying, you know, we're pretty good. We can get better, and we're going to get better, but, but we do things pretty well because we eat the same food that our customers do. So our business philosophy and our philosophy in life is that how do we help our customers reach their goals? It's not about me. It's about having that success for our customers to where they can stay in business. And so if we can put them in a position to capture the value that's available in today's beef markets, then we too have a chance of staying in business. And I think it was said very, very well earlier, um, unhealthy cattle are not profitable for anybody. Nobody wants them, nobody needs them. And so as we work to get better and we work to improve these systems, I think that knowledge that's being transferred from all of you folks to us, uh, we keep getting a little better every day. So oftentimes, and this is my roommate from college, and, and they say, what do you do? What do you do? Well, you have to have the relationship with your veterinarian. And this is Dr. Randall Spare, and we do what he tells us to do. I don't really care about which vaccines I'm supposed to use. That's your job, Randall. Blue box, red box, what am I supposed to do? But we listen to it. And, and a lot of you, there's probably some pharmaceuticals that have sponsored this meeting, and we thank you very much for that. They come to see me, Neville. I say, I'm busy. I'm not going to make this decision. You've got to go sell it to the Ashland Vet Clinic. If they buy into it, they believe it, and they tell us to do it, we'll use it as much or more than anybody in the United States. Relationships matter. Here's my family. You know, I used to be very proud, Neville. I mean, we're animal science buddies, so we can talk about it, but we could, I could make a sleeve last for 100 cows, and I could make a needle last, oh boy, I could make that needle last for maybe 150 cows. Today, we, we call it, and it may not be cool to say it, but we call it safe sex as far as one cow, one needle, one cow, one sleeve. Uh, all these things that we do, and this is my twin sons and my daughter-in-law, and uh, we use disposable syringes all the time. And uh, they're loading vaccines as we get ready to go work cattle. And uh, they were pretty proud of this, so I took the picture. We, we give three vaccines there, and you can read them as well as I can, but uh, made a pretty picture but it's very sanitary and they load that up in the in the cooler and make sure that we keep everything at the right temperature and everything and then we go work cattle and on the modified live we, do, we don't do more than we can do in a certain period of time I promise so here we are working some cattle and uh, and we don't leave it up on our dash Randall was telling me one time about a guy this vaccine it just didn't work and well where have you been keeping it well it's been on the dash in my pickup and this was in July and it's like yeah I wonder why that didn't work so anyway, here's the, here's the crew, there's my nephew Grant, and it's a family operation. And uh, so we're excited to do these things and have these opportunities, but I would suggest to you that this connection between cattle and people, people, the beef industry, and food, it's crucial. And I was, was pleased to hear that, that you know, how well beef is received, and you talk about the beef demand, that's the greatest story in the last two years. And, and my friends at Tyson, what do you mean you were afraid you couldn't meet that demand, you know? If you put that target out there with a few dollars, producers aren't dumb, they'll go find it. And so I'm, I'm pleased that they're able to meet that demand, I'm pleased they're using Angus Genetics to do that. But we have the information, we have the technology, and we have the ability to do that. So that's a busy slide. We work a lot with cattle. We work with actually National Beef and U.S. Premium Beef, which is a producer-owned uh, company that has ownership in National Beef. And, you know, I often hear, you know, these cattle, these cattle, they all look alike. What's the differences? Well, we track this. This is our own cattle and customer cattle and cattle that we have worked with. And the bottom line there is on 5,250 head of cattle, you know, weighing 1387 at harvest, 98% uh, choice or better. You know, the national average for prime when we started working at National Beef, Greg, was 1%, 2%, then you get to 3%, 4%. Last week, I believe I heard where prime was at 9%. Well, you know, when my customers, if they don't get 20% uh, or above uh, prime, then Mark, we need to talk. And so the, the good news is these, these traits are highly, highly heritable. And uh, those 5,000 plus head of cattle are 23% are choice. And you look across there and you look at the the incentives to do the right things, okay? What that all adds up to, those 5,000 plus head of cattle, 
uh, nearly $500,000 more on the base price, which is $94 per head on those 5,247 head of cattle. Not only did they have the genetics to do that, they were healthy, they accomplished all those things, and in general, that would be a 15-month age uh, calf in most parts, and they had the genetics to do it, but they couldn't do it if they weren't healthy. The ones that, that are in that empty shipping pen, if there was any of that in this empty sick pen, they're not gonna have this kind of results. So when we look at, uh, when we worked with U.S. Premium Beef and we looked at the bottom line, and actually, I actually just talked to the U.S. Premium Beef Young Producers Group uh, oh, a couple nights ago. And uh, when we started that program, and, and because I'd gone into a packing plant with my father with a clipboard to get carcass data and such, so they sent me in to negotiate the grid, you know, the evil packer and the, the 35 year old producer. So I'm like, M -m 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 Mr. Miller? Oh, you know, and he was a, John Miller was a very charismatic, still is very charismatic, good person. He's like, what do we need to do? And I said, M -m 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 Mr. Miller, what, what makes you money? Well, that's easy, that's the high quality prime certified Angus beef. I said, well, we've got to design a grid that will pull those cattle through, just like Tyson did, to, to meet that demand. He said, well, we've got to be careful if we get too many of those choice cattle and they mentioned 80% choice across the whole United States, and we've even peaked higher than that uh, at times. But Mr. Miller said, uh, if we do that and we get too much of it, it's just commodity, commodity beef. So we're getting our air back. We're a bunch of kids in there with the evil packer. I said, well, then you've got to quit being a meathead, and we've got to build demand. And how do you build demand? You build demand with trust, with transparency, with information, and with a better product. So we're proud that our customers, uh, since 1998, going through U.S. Premium Beef, the ones that we've tracked, uh, we've been able to put $8.6 million back into their pockets. And again, that's about $95 per head on those 92,000 head of cattle. So again, healthy cattle, predictable cattle, make for profitable cattle, but none of this works if nobody wants to buy our product. You know, often in the beef industry we've had this motto, beef, it's what's for dinner. And I always used to say, beef, if you don't eat it, I don't have a job. And so we've got to make sure, and you, you think back to the mid-90s and you think about these success stories. Dr. Harlan Ritchie, there, those kids the other night, they didn't know who he was, Greg, but Dr. Harlan Ritchie, Michigan State University, always the prognosticator for the beef industry. In 1995, he wrote a paper that said, five years to meltdown. Of course, Henry Gardner was my Henry and hero, and I said, what does he mean? He said, he means at the rate we're losing market share, in five years we won't be a viable protein. I said, could that really be possible? He said, yes. Oh my goodness, we better get to work. And that's why things like U.S. Premium Beef, like the, the, all these programs that have occurred to make our product better. So let's think about things and think about the opportunities that we have to do. And you know, when you see this coming at you, what's important in life comes to you real quick. So many of you and many of you in this room helped us overcome this fire, but this happened on March 6th of 2017. And essentially, if you haven't heard the story, our community, it burned to the ground. Uh, There's 600,000 acres there and 500,000 acres of it, of it burned. And, and people said to me, uh, they were texting all this technology and things, are, are you okay? Are you anywhere close to that fire? Well, we were pretty much the epicenter and we won't, we won't get into that. But the bottom line is what matters is people. And so when you look at people, Relationships matter. These are, <coughs> excuse me, two of my mentors, Roy Wallace, Henry Gardner. Henry's in the purple. We like purple in Kansas. Uh, there's some people that like blue, but we like purple from my side of the state. Uh, but these people, I hear them every day. They're both gone, but I hear them every day. This, these things matter. You know, surround yourself with good people. Make good friends, because they're going to be there with you. 
keep them. Stay in touch. Laugh. Have some fun. This little fella, his dream growing up was to run for Kansas State University. So if you don't think God is, isn't good, but he's also got a sense of humor, all he ever wanted to do was run for Kansas State. His brothers ran for Kansas State. He's running for the University of Kansas now because they offered him the opportunity. <laughs> and people go, how you get along with that, Mark? I said, I'm the biggest KU track fan that you'll ever see. And I love when we beat the purple in track. Laugh, have fun, enjoy this journey. Don't stop teaching. Don't stop learning. Relationships matter. You know, you heard him the other day, and he's talking, and, and he was texting me, telling me this and that. And I texted him, I said, I think I'm out of my element here today. He said, oh, you'll be fine. You know, and he and I, when we went to orientation at Kansas State in the spring of 1979, you know, we have kids that can't even imagine that was that far back, but 1979, he and I ended up in the same group together because we were the only ones that actually knew where Western Kansas was. And as fate would have it, uh, we've been together one way or another since 1979. Randall Spare, Ashton Vet Clinic. You know, I tell students, I tell young people, if you don't have a good relationship with your financial, with your bank, I mean, this is a part of our management team. This is Kendall K of the Stock Rower State Bank. That fire hits, so, you know. We had debt, we all of a sudden had a lot more debt. You know, they make a spe special line of credit. They reduce the interest rates. People matter. We won't get into the genetic side of it much, but here's Bill Bowman and Sally Northcutt, two of the greatest animal breeders in the history of the beef industry. People matter. I mentioned Steve Hunt, U.S. Premium Beef. He was another fellow that we went to school with at Kansas State. And, and oftentimes I'll tell kids when I go back to K-State, I say, if you see U.S. Premium Beef's logo and you see that it's purple, I go, is that because of we're bullish on beef? Is it because it's purple? Because, uh, you know, royal purple has value? And they said, yeah, yeah, that's true. I said, no, that's part of it. But we all knew each other one way, shape, or form. And if you don't think the person on the left and on the right matters, you know, we had a loose affiliation. And, and when this idea came up, when Harlan Ritchie wrote that paper, like, Houston, we got a problem. We might not make it out of our life in the beef industry. Uh, there were several of us from Kansas State, coordinated by Steve Hunt, we got together and we made a system that made a difference for, for many people and many in the beef industry. This is a good life. This is a good business. You are great people. Can we get better at what we do? Absolutely. Can we leave this place better than we found it? Absolutely.